must obtain grace to fight a rival mentality a rival in court you must obtain grace from god to fight a rival mentality i've arrived at this level of anointing i've arrived at this level of grace i've arrived at this level of revelation i've arrived at this level of prosperity i have 10 estates i'm a billionaire i'm a politician finally i've gotten to be a house member or senator or president or governor or whatever it is i am now a ceo i am now the african representative of this bank or this conglomerate arrival mentality has destroyed many people same philippians please give us 3 and verse 12 let's read 12 and 13 First, same philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 philippians 3 12 okay let me just pull it up here so that we don't waste time philippians hallelujah all right he said not as though i had already attained either were already perfect but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of jesus christ verse 13 he says brethren now where we read i count myself so he's saying it is not as far as i'm concerned no matter what you tell me i still walk like somebody who has something in front i don't walk like someone who has arrived you know what arrival mentality is that means you get to a point where you tell yourself i'm not talking of contentment arrival mentality is very different from contentment hallelujah where you feel there is nothing more to do with your life as far as maximizing life is concerned you know that happened to lucifer i will ascend above the stars of god and i will be like the most high after all my office is the custodian of the mysteries of heaven so i think i know everything little did he know that there was more beware of a rival mentality i wrote something down here both failure and success both discouragement and over celebration of results can be distractions that means success and failure can do the same thing to you eventually failure can discourage you success can create complacency while it is good and honest to celebrate every stride you must be careful and manage your celebration so that you do not over celebrate results now the truth is that when you rise among people who are lower than you no matter how little little your result is it will look big in the eyes of those lower than you you must be honest with yourself and gauge yourself by a global kingdom standard and then ask yourself have i really gone there in africa we celebrate very small things small results small results in business in ministry you will see a little corporation that maybe is netting just a few million naira even not even dollars and yet the pride that the leaders and the executives have respectfully speaking no just because you can afford food to eat just because you have a house you have a car just because you can afford a bit of luxury living and a few things it does that is not all there is to life there is so much more are we together the price of unbending focus i talk to myself every time on this wise joshua selman thank god for what god is doing in your life my phone is full of text messages from people literally across the globe without exaggeration oh man of god i listened to this this one happened and in all fairness they are not lying however you must tell yourself everything god has given me now is not all he plans to give me every level is the test for the next level every level as soon as you achieve something in a level know that it is automatically the exam you are writing for the next level every level of achievement is the test you must pass for the next level are we together
so both failure and success if you have done well and the world is celebrating you don't run away don't push it away and say no 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 don't celebrate me no 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 but you must know when to draw the line the moment celebration becomes flattery and it's already planting the seed of complacency you must stop and say thank you i have received enough to motivate me for the next level my exams have started you must know when the feast of celebration is over and when you've entered the classroom to write the exams if you are still dancing in the classroom believing that the classroom is the place for celebration you will fail your exams thank god for this new level of the prophetic thank god for this new level of grace this new level of insight but now that you have given me oh god thank you for it but i know it is an exam i'm writing moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful hallelujah there are many many little small prayer groups that will never grow into a giant kingdom platform for blessing the nations because right from infancy many of them are almost killing themselves on an on arrival let me tell you this i'm speaking particularly to those in probably ministry business and all of that let us be very careful let us be very careful let's learn from our fathers there is nothing that somebody can want that has not been given and yet these fathers you see them with humility including businessmen look let me tell you for those of you who have had the opportunity to sit with billionaires and very wealthy people you will be flattered by their humility and their sense of honor and respect and you'll be asking is it really is it these people are? and then the ones that don't have anything you will know immediately that they don't have anything are we together a wealthy man can enter a restaurant and is very cautious greeting people good afternoon how are you and somebody will tell you that's the owner of this restaurant too and you hear somebody who will sit down five minutes is impatient you've kept me waiting here you don't know who i am you better you see you easily know when people begin to when they lose focus and they lose vision listen i don't know if i've taught it here but if you study the life of gideon there were two tests that they had to pass to qualify the 300 who defeated the Midianites. When Gideon blew the trumpet, the Bible says 33,000 people came. But there were too many, God said. He said, no, I can't take these people to the place of destiny like this. Test number one, whoever is afraid, whoever loves and misses his home more than the future, go back. And the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back. That means everybody was there hey, we'll make it but some were already dead on arrival they went back and he said there are still too many test number two he told them you will get to the water brooks the water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey you would have to make some progress and he says study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water it never takes water sitting or lying down it means and I'm, I'm aware that i still have somewhere to go this is a momentary success by the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time that is a sign of results now you have gotten water to quench your thirst and he said those who sit down that means they have camped i'm not standing up again let them go home their attitude those who lap like dogs that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing but the real journey is not to i didn't leave my home to come and drink water i le left my home to go and defeat the midianites and if i find water on the way thank god but i will not come there and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less when we know there's 